Jesus was arrested in Gethsemane. It was nighttime. He was arrested under the cover of darkness by a great multitude of soldiers and temple guards and religious leaders. Uh, He will go through six trials the night of his arrest, three religious trials followed by three civil trials. After his arrest, he was brought first to the house of Annas, who was the former high priest and was really the the power over Judaism. Annas then sent Jesus to Caiaphas, the high priest at that time. And all of the religious leaders were gathered together at the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. And that's where this story about Peter takes place in the courtyard of Caiaphas's palace. In our passage, Peter denies the Lord. In fact, he denies knowing Jesus completely, even cursing and swearing while he denied the Lord. And so the question, obviously, that we ask is, what happened to Peter? How did Peter get here? where he denied that he even knew Jesus Christ. After all, it was Peter who made that wonderful profession of faith in Jesus Christ at Caesarea Philippi in Matthew chapter 16, when he said of Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And now Peter denies knowing him at all. So what happened to Peter? Well, Peter's denial didn't just happen. It didn't just happen out of nowhere. You know, people usually don't fall into sin or fall into denying the Lord Jesus Christ. It's it's rare for a believer to just suddenly decide one day to deny Jesus, just kind of turn against him out of the blue. There's usually a progression of steps leading up to the denial of Jesus, steps that you can go back and you can retrace and see how they ended up at a place where they deny the Lord. Peter had a progression of steps that led him to denying Jesus, and we can trace his steps or we might call them his missteps. To begin with, look back at verse 31, look back at verse 31. This is earlier the same evening. Jesus said to his disciples, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. And Peter answered Jesus and said to him, not that Jesus asked a question. He was just making a statement. But Peter answers him. And said to him, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus told the disciples they will all forsake him that night, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Jesus will be struck. The sheep will scatter. And Peter disagreed with Jesus. Peter disagreed with Jesus, saying, I'll never be made to stumble. All your other disciples might stumble because of you, but not me. Peter disagreed with what Jesus said. Jesus goes on in verse 34, and he says directly to Peter, Assuredly, I say to you that this night, Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to Jesus, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. Jesus tried to warn Peter of what's to come later that evening. And instead of showing humility and contriteness at the words of Jesus, Peter Peter doubles down. No way, Lord. I'll die before I deny you. Peter, listen, Peter was prideful. Peter was prideful. He had a highly inflated opinion of himself, his merits, and his abilities. He has such an inflated view of himself that he is disputing with Jesus Christ. 
Think about that. He's arguing with Jesus over what Jesus said about him. No way. Peter is blinded by his pride. You, you would think Jesus saying what he said so bluntly in verse 34 would make Peter melt into a heap and throw himself at the feet of Jesus, begging for mercy, begging for help. Oh, I don't want to deny you. I don't want to deny you. Help me, God. You got to help me. You got to help me. But Peter instead is overly confident in himself. Peter's pride and self-confidence is the first step that led to Peter denying the Lord. He's prideful and he's arrogant. And he is so prideful and arrogant that he does not believe the words of Jesus. Proverbs twenty nine twenty three says, A man's pride will bring him low. And Peter's pride brought him low. In Romans chapter 12, Paul warns us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, but rather think of ourselves with sober judgment. The Bible tells us in our flesh dwells no good thing, and we should place absolutely no confidence in our flesh. Peter was fully confident in his flesh. He was so confident that he would never even deny the Lord. And it's his confidence in his flesh, his confidence in himself and his ability that will lead him to his fall. Pride. Psalm 103 says, God knows how weak we are and he remembers that we are only dust. We're just dust. We're just dirt. Bunch of dirt bags is all that we are. <laughs> We don't remember that we're dust, but God remembers that we're dust. We don't realize how weak we really are, but God knows how weak we really are. And so if God warns us in his word about something regarding us and our weakness, well, we should take heed to his word. God knows what he's talking about. And so Peter's first step down the path of denying Jesus Christ was his pride, his self-confidence, his overconfidence in himself.